يا رب إنك مقصود ومعتمد الصلاة وأتم تسليم على سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلم السابقين وقائد الغر المحجرين وسيد ولد آدم أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم بارك عليه وعلى آله الغر الميامين وأصحابه نجوم الدين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين أما بعد يا فاضل السيسر I'm too happy to be among you and will share some ideas with you. One of them is which bother me a lot nowadays to break the barriers between anyone and the Quran. To be honest with you, we have these barriers, you know. All of us, you know, the Arabic speaker and the non-Arabic speaker, they have their barriers with the Quran in different way. And one of the main problem we say that it is because we are too busy. The other problem said by him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because we are too sinful. Okay, and these are the main two causes to set something, you know, set a dam or a wall, you know, between us and the Quran, which is, in my view, it's completely against the tradition of the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he used to convey the message of Allah, subhanahu wa taala. I give you this example, we read in Sirah and, and other references, you know. Whenever he had revelation with Abi Ummi during the Meccan time, he used to go to the largest uh, gathering of the Meccan people, the non-Muslim. And he's going to stand up there and in very loud voice, you know, he recite what happened, you know. And he exposed himself to many of those negative reactions, you know, physically, non-physically, and you name it. And he did not care about all of these matters, whereas the companion, they have the major concern, you know, about them. And they said, that's one of us, you know, take this task, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu And they tried to do it, you know, by Sayyidina Abdullah Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he was injured badly, you know, by these people, you know. What I'm trying to say, the availability of the Quran here, you know, I see it in the library here, and I see it in the press, uh, you know, of some of you. This is well, it, it almost, it, it's impossible to be as such without the practice of the Prophet ﷺ. Without the practice of those who came after the Prophet ﷺ. Not as may, may be thought, you know, by some of the Muslim and all of the non-Muslim. The Quran did not rise all over the years, you know, the hundreds and hundreds of years by these copies. No, it was it, it's transmitted, it's transmitted, you know, by what we call in Arabic talaqi. That's me. Now, myself, and this is not only for myself, for anyone else. If you ask me from what copy you did you memorize Quran, to be honest with you, I did not keep it, you know, I don't know. Okay. But if you ask me, on whom of among the, the shiuch you, you recite the Quran, uh, I, with full respect and full, uh, full honor, I have Sayyidi Sheikh Muhammad Sikharik. You got this point? Yani here the Quran transmit all over the years by those great people, you know, not by the copies that we have. We should respect these, these copies. They are on our heads, but they are not the, the way. I should mention that. From the beginning of the life of the Prophet after the revelation, you are going to find the script, you know, second and stand right away, you know, next to the uh, verbal, you know, revelation come to the Prophet We have in some weak narration, even Sayyidina Jibreel, when he came first to the Prophet he had it written, you know, in a uh, silk class, you know, we have this written. Uh, and I'm not here to put down those copies. They are highly honored. They are one of our best thing, you know, physical thing to have it about our holy book. We should, Imam Nawawi said, even the, the, the one who memorized the Quran, he should find a time to look at the Mus'haf, okay, because <laughs> he worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only in his eyes, you know, by looking at, at the Mus'haf. I'm not here to put them down, hasha wa killa. I'm here to say they are not the primary one. They are not the most important one. The most important one, to have it memorized into your heart. And I should thank all, uh, those who arrange, you know, to highlight these points, you know. This uh, this uh, idea originated, I see here, we try to learn from the Prophet ﷺ. We try to improve ourselves, you know, by his tradition. And such a person like me is going to find himself way. We have a far 
and distant way, uh, way you know, between him and us, you know. We, we, we recite those ahadith, those great ahadith. But uh, the, the setting completely is different, you know. Where a person like me, I'm interested in dunya, you know. I'm interested in gaining money. I'm interested in being busy, you know, with my family. And we, I'm sorry, you know, I just heard something, you know, where we saw all of those negative actions, you know, around us, you know, which is, is going to block our practice of Islam badly. It's going to wound us badly, you know. But we don't care a lot, you know, about it. And we care about just eating, drinking, drinking, having a nice time, you know, and sleep, you know. And such setting, you know, doesn't fit the Prophet setting at all. You have this holy word, you know, come from the Prophet But he was in a completely different setting. They sent him out of his town. When he reached Juhfa, he turned his face and the tears start coming from his eyes, you know. And when he returned back Mecca, you know, after eight years, they asked him, are you going to be in your house? He said, I don't have a house in Mecca. He sacrificed everything, you know. And we should highly appreciate this, you know. This sacrifice of the Prophet which made those matters available to us. I cannot imagine, you know, after 1400 years in such a country or in U.S., you know, to have the Qur'an available without this unique, excellent practice of the Prophet And uh, uh, I have very يعني, negative warning signs, you know, because we are not that good, you know, to handle this responsibility, you know. It's guaranteed by Allah that this We'll call our hearts a little bit, you know, that is guaranteed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I may miss this honor, okay? It's going to be all over the years, no doubt about it, because it's mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's going to take its place regardless of those tricky and those bad uh, trials and bad uh, matters that they are done to the Muslims, you know, on all aspects, you know, they try to block Muslim of the Holy Quran, you know, by the, all of these ways. And the Muslim, in most of their cases, they are quite helpful, you know, in, in having those barriers and blockage come to them. Okay, so the idea which came to my mind, we, we have a hadith narrated in Sunan al-Tirmidhi and Mustadrak al-Hakim, and the uh, scholar of the hadith, they said that chain is quite excellent and sound chain even though they may have some rejection to the meaning of the hadith My, myself you know i when i say i look at the people of hadith they said it has a sound chain like iman zahabi and others you know for me it means a lot and uh, i would like myself to practice it i would love everyone to practice it even if he's not that serious, you know, in memorizing the Quran, just to mend his relation with the Quran. Then this bright, I, I, I think it's bright, I don't know how bright is it, you know, came to my mind when I asked, you know, about the practical points that anyone should do it, you know, to, to memorize the Quran. To be honest with you, I'm uh, sort of sporadic or secluded person. I don't and you get in touch with people, you know, a lot, you know. Then I have this idea to understand those meaning mentioned by the Prophet said that dua. We are going to seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to practice them and we should apply them in our practice. By this, we are going to have the two components which you frequently you mention it in your prayer when you say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ is your duty. إِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala matter to give you the help and the support, okay? And we should have it in all aspects of your life, in the, in the religious practice, in uh, life practice, whenever you go to, to work and you read it. All of those might shouldn't, uh, uh, all of these maneuvers, they shouldn't be forgotten, you know, wherever you have anything like this. And uh, this is uh, really was quite helpful for me to understand and tell people, you know, about it. 
And to be honest with you, I don't have practice with them, but I I have full confidence in them, you know, because they were mentioned by the Prophet But the first point he mentioned, I'm going to read it in Allah, after praising Allah subhanahu the Prophet this is his new way of tradition, he used to praise Allah subhanahu wa and uh, give the, those great description uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he start asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you, you look at the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu this is my experience, you find the praise, praise uh, praising Allah and whatever, they are much more of, much more than the request that you have in the dua. And when you have a request, it's going to be in general, you don't dictate in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is the adab, this is the etiquette. I'm not here to say it's haram to, to, to do it otherwise, but, but for me, it looks much more excellent, you know, the way the Prophet did do it, okay? So here, the first component, you know, in this dua, what? To quit sins. This is the first one ever said by the Prophet And this is what said for who? For Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah, those great, great people, you know, perhaps the worst sin they have ever, you know, in their life, much better than the best did I have, you know, not perhaps, this for sure, for certainty I have it, okay? So here, when the, uh, the Prophet instructed Sayyidina Ali to say so, this is much more needed for us, okay? We are, we are very bad. We are not good at all, you know, in our relation to the Quran. So let's have this as the first step, okay? No practice, nothing, you know. We, 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 we read in the Quran, don't do so, uh, this. We finish reading and we do it, you know. Do that, we finish reading it and we, we did not do it. And you name it, yani we, have, we have this negligence, you know, in all aspects of our life. And all of these matters, I look at them as a sinful action. And this is the first sentence, you know, really I admire a lot. This is the first sentence, you know, in the dua of the Prophet Oh Allah, help me to quit sins, you know. And this is, is going to be the one of the main ma major barriers that we have to block you of having good relations with, with the Quran Kareem. To what extent? Inshallah, we'll not reach that day ourselves, you know. I'm quite sure it's coming, you know. We may, inshallah, we may not reach it, you know. One day, the Quran is going to return back. Return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, I am, you descended me to a people. Descend. What's the meaning of descend? We were descended, okay? We are human children, uh, children of Sayyidina Adam. We were descended down to this earth. From where? From heaven. We were given the promise, the appointment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go back. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirmed that appointment. But the humankind, not all of them, they are going to keep up with this appointment. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. In the wa'ad Allah haqq, the appointment, the promise from Allah, it's truthful. فَلَا تَغُرَّنَّكُمُ الْحَيَاةِ الْجُنَى وَلَا يَغْرَنَّكُمْ بِلَا الْغَرُونَ These are the two main barriers that is going to block you of returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? يعني we descended down. All of us look forward to go back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of His mercy made some of those Second or highly respected, or those Sha'airullah, we practice with Sha'airullah. These are the second physical and non physical matters that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them available to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down, sent them down, descended them, not because they are down, this is not their position to make us go up. One of them is the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran, when they is going to return back. Sorry, no more activities because people they don't practice me at all. When I look at this, my heart should be too shaky, okay? Yeah, it's not a matter of my IQ or my strong memory or whatever. It's a matter of practice, okay? When I practice this Quran, I have strong relationship, strong friend, friendship with him, with, with him, not with it, with him, okay? I'm going to have this with him. And uh, it's going to stay with me. When you have all over the place, you know, man practice toward the Quran, the Quran 
get paid out and we get back to Allah. You have the holy cow. Allah has descended. The, the, the house of Allah doesn't deserve to be among us. Now, when you pray, you tell yourself, you know, to holy cow. When they want to die, they end them, you know, there. When you go there, you make, make prostration, not to God. And you put yourself down, you know, in front of these stones because this is the instruction of Allah. Subhanahu. In the awwal bayt al one of the meaning of wudi'a was, was put down. This is not the space of the camp. It was put down. To do what? To make people go up. <coughs> okay? One day again, it's going to be broken, broken down. Okay? So it's going to be taken away. I'm not here to speak about these issues, you know, but all of those matters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of His mercy, to make you keep up your appointment, make them available to you. But this availability is not going to last, for, last forever, and we are going to miss them, you know, one after another before the hereafter. And this was mentioned by the Prophet Just I myself, you know, even though I am very bad practitioner, I ask myself, how is my life is going to be without Quran? If there is no Quran available. Now when Sheikh Harun he started discuss that one of my specialties of course is Quran. That's me. I'm going to be neglected completely. You know that there's that nothing. You know, and if this is the case, you know, for some of us in this life, it's going to be the case of all of us. You know, in the hereafter, if we neglect the Quran, we are going to be put aside. Okay. Wa wudi al kitab. Many of the scholars they said al kitab al Quran. That's me. The Holy Quran. All of you recalling instead uh, uh, assessment of your deeds, you know, in this life is going to be according to the Quran, and that's why this is the first and uh, perhaps the most important point to quit doing sins. Okay, why this? You are going to have much better relation with the Quran. The Prophet mentioned this. Thoroughly in a sound hadith, Al Quran, Shafi'a Mushafa'a, wa Mahiru Musaddaq, Maja'alahu Amama, Qada, Ila Jannah, wa Jara'alahu Wara'a, wa Saqahu Ila Jannah. Al Quran, Shafi'a Mushafa'a. As the Quran, as many of those Sha'a'ir Allah, it has its intercession to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us, we need the intercession. Okay? And he's going to be in his intercession of the Quran, the intercession of the Quran is going to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the other hand, he has a negative component of it. The Quran is going to speak badly about some of us, and this is going to be again accepted by Allah Subhanahu. How? How we are Rasulullah? He said, whoever made Quran in front of him, for sure, in, physically I should make it in front of me and on my head, you know, and have high respect to it, you know. But here I think what's meant, you know, in this hadith in front of him, that means I'm going to follow the instruction of the Quran. I'm going to go according to it. Sometimes <coughs> I may find that my benefit is completely opposite of the Quran. But I may find that this is too much on me, too difficult to be practiced or whatever. I'm going to give the preference to the instruction of the Quran. I'm not exaggerating what I said, you know. The companion, the other prophets, they are humankind like us. Some of us may be much more knowledgeable than their companion. Okay? But I see one of the main differences you know, between us and their companion, what is it? This point. They have the full confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said something, even though scientifically and logically and uh, out of experience and you name it, they have the benefit and otherwise they will live away. They put down, they, they just throw behind their back, you know, all of these matters and goes by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instruction. I'm not going to give examples. We have some examples, you know, Bukhari and elsewhere, you know, about how they put all of those logic matters in their thoughts, you know, behind when they were instructed to do it otherwise. Okay? And, uh, and we should, should say, and that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. It, it, it was a possibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may command us to kill ourselves, you know, and get out of our houses. I'm sorry to tell you nowadays, to keep up, you know, not like to keep the health, you know, and stay in our houses. We give up, you know, many portions, you know, of our religion according to this. And among ourselves and our family. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if I'm going to command this, just few of them, they are going to grant. See, like this I cannot imagine. Speaking about the companion. And if they are going to practice it, it's going to be much better to them and much more steadfast of their religion. Then we are going to give them a great reward from our side. Here about Hatal speaking the plural form, not because we have gods, no, we have only one God, but Many scholars, they said when Allah subhanahu wa speaks in the plural form, that means although these attributes that you know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although these things you know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and many of those not known to you, they are going to work for you to give you this reward. Do you need it? We really, I need it. And to be honest with you, when I look around and I see people how they give fatwa and how they practice, and I beg Allah, Ya Rabbi, I have just few days, you know, left in this life, keep them up for me, you know. They are going to be guided by us, by us, not by me. He said, by us, Sirat al Mustaqim, a straight path. We, I, I feel myself, I'm in real need. I'm too fearful, you know that. I may be. You know, temptated, you know, by some of these life, you know, money, and you name it, you know, as the others, you know, they did, you know. And then, when I'm in real need, and the only solution besides begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying, إِذْ دِيَا frequently, okay, to follow the commands of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is too merciful to make it easy on us. He did not ask us to go out of our house. He did not ask us to, uh, to kill ourselves, you know. The Prophet ﷺ went out of his house. All the Muhajirin, they went out of their houses. We did not go out of our houses. You see how it's too easy? Well set up from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how we... I put my head, head down, you know. How we, in our practice, we give priority to all of other, other matters than this matter. Then, the second point, which is too important again in this time, you know, in particular, I, I, for the old people, I don't see it as a problem. For the humankind nowadays, I see it as a problem. What? Free time. All of uh, this mentioned in Arabic, All of us, we get ourselves, you know, involved in something which is not our business. You may have a speaker, you know, here. Did Sayyidina Idris was, was before Sayyidina Nuh or after Sayyidina Nuh? We'll have an argument, you know, for one hour or so. What benefit you get? Nothing. Ramadan, uh, uh, the Eid, Eid al-Fitr, was on Friday or Saturday? Give argument, you know, for this is not, uh, we are going to keep arguing you know, forever for that, you know. And none of us is going to change anything. That's mean, this is not my business. I did not get any benefit from it. I'm quite sure and positive, when we speak about Quran, everyone is going to have benefit, okay? When we speak about those problematic, you know, matters, I'm quite confident no one is going to change any of If you brought a Shafi'i person, is Shafi'i better or Hanafi? Are you good Hanafi? A really bad Hanafi, okay. Uh, in my view, the, the good uh, practitioner, Shafi'i practitioner, is much better than the bad practitioner Hanafi. Okay? And he, this is a matter which is going to concern you. Here we are speaking about, speaking about religious matters. What's about other matters? We got our, you know, we have this website. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa protect me. Up till now, I not, did not get myself involved in it. But I hear from the people, is one of the main factors of wasting your time. What benefit you get from it? I had so and so spoke with me, let's say from Australia. MashaAllah. You have before him, you know, you cannot count it in years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you a message. You should take care of that message, you know, before the uh, so and so from Australia. That person, you may not meet with him at all. 
But all of us, we are going to go back to Allah wa anna ila rabbika muntah. Our end is there. And the king there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the rules are there, they are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, rules, not my rule or yours. Okay? And the, all of them, they were given to us, and we should find better way. Okay? And here, I should put in the same time, we have the availability. Okay? It was shown to me, you know, perhaps I did not use it in Abdul, but it was shown to me the programs that has been applied to the Quran whenever you want to hear any of these verses in the Quran by any voice you want to know of those famous recitals in the, in the Muslim world or you want to have interpretation or you want to have translation and you want to have anything. All of those programs, they have been, are they available in your cell phone? Do you practice them? When, uh, when they told you, you know, uh, uh, you went to the doctor, you know, to take your boy or whoever, you know, they told you, you should wait for 30 minutes. Are you ready to open a channel with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or you are going to waste your time and say, and say that this is too much, you know, I got bored, you know. No, try. Yani, in my case, and I think it's applicable for everyone, it should be tricky, you know, and stealing our time. To steal, to take away. We have some of those, we call them duties, you know. Some of them, they are quite important. The other, they are not important at all, you know. But we, we get ourselves, you know, involved in them. And this is your smartness, you know. You should find a way to steal, to take away some of your time, you know. To mend your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, you know, in a hadith, the Quran, the Holy Quran, like a rope. You know, one end by your hands and the other end by the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I cannot imagine, you know, in my mind, I cannot even think about, you know, to have much better position, you know, of, as a humankind, rather than to hold, hold in my hand something is held by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And we should find our way, okay? We are not excused, you know, this. When we, when we know the importance of the Holy Quran, okay? When we know... This is the problem. Sayyid Aswar Rahman said, if we know the reality of the wording of Allah, we are not going to feel stuffed, you know, or full of it. Now, Arif, Arafna Kalam Allah, Mashabi'ana. I'm sorry to tell you, I'm very bad practitioner, but to tell you this story, you know, and go back, you know, and sleep in the bed, okay? Whereas Sayyid Aswar Rahman was above 80, he said so. And he, after, uh, behind Maqam Sayyidina Ibrahim, he stood there. In one rak'ah, he recited the whole Qur'an, above it. This annoyed me a lot. Why? Because that old person, he had something. He tasted something I never tasted, you know. They said that I am expert in Qur'an. I am not expert at all in Qur'an. Because that old man, he has some experience that I don't have. I have a problem. Why? The problem is not that the Quran. The Quran has been the same, alhamdulillah, never changed. The problem in the people, the people, they have changed a lot, okay? I'm not similar to Rasman ibn Affan. Here comes the problem. He was efficient, I was completely deficient. He was the servant of the Quran. You see, up till now, those Quran, they say, al Rasmul Rasman. What is the Rasmul Rasman? That the way it was written by Sayyidina Rasman. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored that person because of his love to Qur'an, okay? To have this script, you know, related. It's initiated from Allah. It's not Rasman ibn Affan. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala script, but we give the name of Rasman ibn Affan to it. Why? Because this is the honor given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Rasman ibn Affan, one of the eight companion, Sayyiduna wa Mawlana Rasulullah wa Rasulullah is one of the eight companions that all chains of the Qur'an nowadays in whole Muslim world they return back to him. Even your ordinary recitation, you recite according to Hafiz and Asim, Asim, uh, his chain ends by five of the companions, one of them is Sayyidina Rasulullah wa Rasulullah. You see, yeah, well, what does it mean? Let's take it from the physical view, not from the non-physical one. The non-physical I cannot speak about. Let's take it from the physical. It, for me, it means whenever any of your people or Muslim, that we have more than a billion Muslims nowadays, you know, 
Whenever anyone of them say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, is going to be rewarded. 19 multiplied by 10, yani 190, and similar to it's going to be given to us. Okay? You see? You see, whenever, well, alhamdulillah, this year in the, uh, during Ramadan, we finish the Quran. MashaAllah, you have good khatim, you know, of the Quran, and Sayyid Uthman has the same baggage, you know, of it. You see? This is the service, you know. You see, you see how great is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarding people who serve this Quran? And this should, this should make something, you know, inside our hearts, you know, to understand the relation that we should build in the Quran. I'd like to mention something, you know, has been my practice by the Sufi people. Some of the Sufi people, they say, to make zikr is better than reciting Quran. And they bring this fake hadith, who baqari in the Quran wa Quran in the That some of those who recite Quran, they may be criminal. Firstly, this hadith, you don't have a chain to it, you know. I feel, correct me if I'm wrong, this is, goes against the attitude of the Prophet. The Prophet was in all aspects of his life, he used to make the Quran available for everyone. I don't expect the Prophet was going to say so. If he did say so, the meaning of it, when someone say, Allah al kadirin and he's a liar. Allah al zalimin and he's unjust and unique. This is the meaning of the Quran. We have one great Sufi Shaykh, what did he say? He said, when you say Subhanallah or La ilaha Allah, Started from the Quran. And it started in the Quran, and by this you are making zikr and reciting Quran. You see the difference between the two attitudes that we have? This is the way. And here, this great Sufi Sheikh, he said, even I'm not telling you not to make zikr, you should make zikr. We have it illustrated that we should say Subhanallah 33 times, okay? After each prayer, before saying Subhanallah, spot it in the Quran. You have Subhanallah in the Quran. Spot it in the Quran. Okay? That's why uh, uh, many of us, you know, when they start La ilaha, what they, do they say? فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا What is this? فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا This is a beginning of the verse in the Quran in Surah Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu When he said, why did he did not say La ilaha إِلَّا He said, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا That I'm initiating myself from the Quran. I'm making the la ilaha Allah from the Quran. These words, they are the wording of the Allah, not my wording. And the difference is going to be it's not measured at all, you know. Like the difference between me and Allah, okay? When I say la ilaha Allah from our side by of my wording, or when I say la ilaha Allah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wording in the Holy Quran. See the difference? What's the difference? The difference as the Prophet said, وَفَضْلُ كَلَامِ اللَّهِ عَلَى سَائِرِ الْكَلَامِ كَفَضْلِ اللَّهِ عَلَى خَرْضِهِ The difference between the wording of Allah and other words, like the difference between Allah and the others. Okay? Then we have the third point. وَالزُقْنِ حُسْنَ النَّظَرِ فِي مَا يُضِيكَ عَنِي This is what has been mentioned by Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan. Okay? يعني we should have the main care the main concern in our life about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be interested in, not what we are interested in, okay? And this is, we have significant difference, you know, among us, and this difference did not start in our time, it started in the time of the Prophet Some Bedouin person who, who did something good to the Prophet so he said, ask whatever you want. He asked for few camels. They are great from the Prophet ﷺ, but they are camels. They, this will not change their identity as camels, you know. Where are these camels? They are none of them. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi what's the difference, you know, between this request from this Bedouin people and the request from that old woman, you know, of Bani Israel? They asked him, what, uh, what is this woman, you know, of Bani Israel? He said, that woman of Bani Israel, to make the long story short, she gave some favor you know, to Sayyidina Musa, and he asked her, whatever you want, ask. She said, I want to be with you, with you in the heaven. And Musa, how come you want to be with me? You know, it's too much, you know, to be with me. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, see how generous is Allah. He said, are we going to give her from your side or from our side? He said, no, ya Allah, from our side. Give her whatever she wants. And when the Prophet said, well, who is the Prophet? Is the messenger of Allah. As if this is a message given to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to be excellent and high in your asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm sorry to tell you, I'm not sheikh, okay? When I come to you, okay, this one asks me, make dua to have my son cured, make dua to have this, okay? Even in the time of the Prophet said they used to ask him this thing, you know, and this great person said, and many of those cured that is going to take place. But the most perfect one among them who, I give you this example. <coughs> There's a tribe, Arab tribe called Saqif. And they were really tough on the Prophet. They hurt him physically when he go there, you know, in the Meccan time. And they hurt his companion when he tried to fight, fight against them, you know, after conquering Mecca. They were really tough. And the Sallallahu Alaihi pulled back to Medina without conquering Taif. Their delegation, they came to Medina on Ramadan, Year nine. And my one way or another, they were one of the latest one to come to Islam of those tough, you know, tribes. When they want to return back to their hometown, Allah oh, Rasulullah put someone as a governor or as a ruler or as a chief, you know, among us. Why I'm bringing it in this setting, you know, because here. Whenever anyone is going to be assigned, it's going to be very critical, okay? Because if he's successful, it's going to be quite helpful. If he's not successful, it's going to be quite dramatic and harmful for the whole Islam. You got my point? And what the, the youngest among them, Osman ibn Abil As, he used to sneak, you know, and go and learn Quran from Sayyidina Abu Bakr Sunni. Whenever he had free time, you know, while they were in Medina, to sneak out and go, this young person. I said, Bakr Siddiq told the Prophet, this one is knowledgeable in the Quran. He said, okay, this one is assigned, this is the governor, this is your government, go back. And the Prophet said, used to have this look to the alive people in this setting, you know. For such a, for me, it's too critical position. What did happen? After less than two years, the Prophet passed away. And all Arabs, they converted. And people of Zakir, they were, were about to convert. And that smart person, what did, they, they, what did he tell them? You know? He told them, you were the last one to come to Islam. Now we want to go back. And this warning from him, saved Sayyidina Abu Bakr, okay? He did not send an army. And he did not have a fight, you know, against me. You see, he saved Sayyidina Abu Bakr, who has a very heavy and very difficult burden on him, radiallahu ta'ala. He saved him a lot, you know, by this smart idea from the Prophet ﷺ to pick up a person who is knowledgeable. See, this is for the alive people. What's about the dead one? I mean, they are not similar to us in their life and in their death, you know. Sadat al Shuhada Uhud. The Muslims, they were badly wounded, you know. They don't have that strength, you know, to have a hole for each one, you know, of these people. The Prophet said, let's have two or three in the same home, same grave. Even in the grave, among those who were killed, you know, in very honorable position with the Prophet. Well, how honorable? The Prophet وسلم, eight years later, he said, I wish that I was left with my companion, you know, in Uhud. That's what you see how honorable? Yet, when he wants to put these bodies, you know, two or three of them, you know, he asked who was more collective, you know, of Quran. And when he's pointed toward one of them, you know, put it at the, at the front, you know, of the grave. This was the attitude of the Prophet for the alive people and for the dead people. Okay. And this is 
I take it as indirect message from him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that this is the way we are going to be judged in this life, in Barzakh, when we move to Barzakh, all of us are going to move to Barzakh, and in the hereafter. So this is really we need it. We need to have the awareness of the Quran, the awareness of the importance of the Quran much more. An old person, you know, back in Syria, he felt sorry, you know. He has very strong memory. He said, he told me, in our time, and this was reality, in our time, the one who is going to memorize Quran either is a blind person or want to be imam in one of the mosques, you know. That person has a lot of poem, you know, and his father used to support him financially to memorize all of these poems. He said, was it better for me you know, if I memorize the Quran? Okay. And here, this is mentioned, this holy hadith you know, of the Prophet ﷺ. You should have something in the heart to drive you. Okay. You may be in a community, they are interested in the Quran. You may be in a community, they are not that interested in the Quran. You may be among people, you know, they look for those who memorize them as good thing, you know, to be like, you may be uh, not, you know. So we need, all of us, we need to have this, I, I, I ex express it as a, an inner, you know, driving way, you know, to, to take heal to the Quran, you know. And this may come from your side, may be initiated from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a hadith, you know, related to Bukhari, Khuzul Quran and Arba'ah, I would like to mention these persons because these people, you know, they are successful in the standard of the Prophet And I would like to see the story of these four, you know, how did they gain the Quran. First of them, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud, too busy one, you know, very poor person, want to spend all of his day, you know, working or having the uh, daycare, you know, of the sheep, you know, of some of the non-Muslim people in Mecca. He try to sneak, you know, not not make it well or bad, you know, just after finishing, complete his work, try to sneak and go to the area of Rasulullah. Then he said, teach me, teach me, teach me about Quran. And he said, inna ka mu'allam. And he, the first one who has mentioned, ulamun mu'allam. And you should be as such, okay? You should seek the knowledge of the Quran and seek the teacher, you know, to teach you the Quran. And this, in my view, was the way of Sayyidina Allah Mas'ud of gaining the Quran. The second one is Ubay ibn Ka'ab. Very lucky person. Why? Because he was initiated from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a command to the Prophet, you go and recite Surah al bayna on Ubay ibn Ka'ab. I'm commanded to recite. Oh, Rasulullah, I was mentioned by name there. He said, yes, by your name and your father's name. You know? And he started crying. Okay. You, should, you should have this effort, okay? You, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may give you something good. I'm, I'm going to tell you this story not to have everyone days, you know. This happened in our time. In our time it happened. I was told, you know, back in Damascus about a woman, illiterate, she doesn't know anything of the Quran. She dreamt one night about a will there, they told her this is the will of the the will of the Quran. And she drank there and she had the ability to recite the whole Quran in the morning. Okay? And here what I'm trying to tell you have the two components, okay? The first component that happened to Sayyidina Allah ibn Mas'ud, seek knowledge, seek the teacher, and have the other component that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to recite the Miyakun. You see? You see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take good care of those good people? But yes, for sure. Nowadays, I, I'm not here to give the reason, you know, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did so, but I fully understand it, you know, because again, Ubay ibn Ka'b, one of these eight companions that he has this involvement towards most of the Qira'at, and he has good service to the Qur'an, you know, I fully understand. And he uh, was not uh, th that person, you know, who used to just relax and lie down, you know, and sleep all the time or whatever. He was one of the best servants, you know, of the Qur'an, and 
And that's why up till now, whenever you say Ubay ibn Ka'ab, the first thing come to your mind, Aqra'u bi kitab la Ubay ibn Ka'ab. The most excellent one or the most efficient one in recite the Quran for you. Then you have Mu'az ibn Jabal. Okay. Very young person, you know, smart one. The Prophet instructed him to say, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibn and he has this unique achievement, okay, of the Quran. Then you have Salim Mawla Abi Hudayfa. And Salim Mawla Abi Hudayfa, okay, what is he? There's one hadith. Many people, they narrate that it was said, you know, about Suhaib. But in the uh, uh, hadith reference, it was said about Salim. لو لم يخف الله لم يعصف. This is a good lovers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if he is not fearful of Allah, he is not going to commit any sin. You see, and here, by his love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he practiced this love, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took care of those matters, you know, of Salim. It's not going to be sinful because he loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love and he's going to get the maximum of his time of fixing relation, you know, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أن تلزم قلبي حفظا في ذلك. Okay. What does this mean? For sure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have the full authority to make any heart of these hearts, you know, go to memorize the Quran. Do you have a duty here? Yes, we have a duty. Okay. You have the duty of driving, okay, of forcefully make this heart whether you are hungry or you are tired, you know, or you don't have the guts, you know, to, to memorize Quran or whatever, you know, to have it done, okay? In this frequent and uh, uh, the way that was expressed in one hadith, when you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by this part is going to be closer to you by an arm and you name it, by this way, you know, of uh, aiming or uh, targeting your heart toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make it much easier for you, okay? Again, you see the greatness of it, you should have the practice and seek the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this way, okay? And here, you have the complete direction of your heart toward the Qur'an. Just tell me when you want me to stop, I'll stop. Okay? Then, he spoke in this hadith about أَتْلُوهُ عَلَى النَّحْوِ الَّذِي يُرْضِيكَ عَنِهِ This may be the quality in recitation and the time of recitation. And you should have both of them, okay? The quality, that's me tajweed class, okay? You should recite the Quran the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I received this question. I memorized that saying 10 juzah or 20 juzah. If I'm going to recite it by tajweed, then I'm going to miss a significant amount of time and not be able to keep up. What my answer be? No, please try to recite it in tajweed, you know? And I'll find the time you know, to do it, okay? And usually, when I receive such a question, I tell them, you know, don't try to go over this, this rule which was given initially from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the way you recite the Quran. You have the quality how? And you have the time. About the timing, I'm sorry to tell you, many of those memorizing the Quran, they put, you know, and I have seen it in some of those houses, you know, this great hadith, it's weak hadith, Ashrafu Ummati Habadul Quran. This is not the hadith. The hadith is as you read it in Bayhaqi, Ashrafu Ummati Habadul Quran wa Ashabul Layl. This is the original hadith. Ashrafu Ummati, those who are the, most, the, the highest in their honor, you know, among my nation, those who memorize Quran, and they have night prayer. prayer. Here, dua, it's a combination. You should have it, a combination. Why? Because this is weak hadith, but in the sound hadith, Sayyidina Jibreel told the Prophet ﷺ, the honor of the believer when he has night prayer. Night prayer, okay? So here, you should have the practice of reciting the Quran the way it should be recited, and to have that time which has been highlighted by these two hadiths. The, 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 the sign one and the weak hadith in this pattern. So shall we stop here? But, but, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, excuse me, I did not finish all of them. Go back.
practice Salat Hifz al-Quran and try to find the meaning of each sentence there, you know, and apply it to the practice in your life. Five minutes more. Okay, when you want me to stop, you have a point, you know, you tell me to stop. Okay, shall I carry on, you have? Yes. Then, and to know we are the kitab to have the illumination, you know, in my. You see, يعني here I look at the last portion of the hadith to have complete involvement in all of your physical and non-physical portions in the Holy Quran. Okay, the Prophet sallallahu he was whenever he has the revelation. To have himself, you know, completely involved in it, you know, even he uh, is not going to interact with anyone surrounding him, you know, and he is going to have this heavy matter you know, on his heart. How heavy? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if this Quran was revealed on a mountain, it's going to crush down, you know. The, so the heart of the Prophet was much stronger than the mountain to receive the Holy Quran. Okay? So here, the occupation. In all aspects of your physical and not physical portion in the Quran, elimination of your sight. Okay? When you have this elimination in the sight, that means you keep away your sight of the illegal one. We have in Surah Quran, Surah Al Nur. What is Surah Al Nur? Surah Al Nur, one third of the beginning of it, the first one third, speak about the relation. The social relation, especially between the two genders, the males and the females. Then all of a sudden, you have one verse, and come Allah Nur Sabah. Start to speak about the elimination from Allah for one third. Then you have all of a sudden similar verse to that one, and you go back to speak about the issue. How do I interpret it? The one who seek elimination from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should put his gaze down, should have the best and most accepted practice toward the other gender was in, uh, designated by Allah Subhanahu To be honest with you, Muslims, they are too bad nowadays, okay, in this practice, okay? We have, and this is the way I look at it, we have the Western people, you know, at front or at back, perhaps, you know, then followed by the Muslim live in the Western country, then followed by the Muslim live in the Muslim countries. We are follow each other. You have the divorce rate, you know, Charlie go up, you know. We have all of these bad relations and illegal relations, and you name it, you know. What's the outcome of it? I'm going to be blind. No illumination, no light. Just imagine yourself here in this hall, you know, without this power, you know, without the, the light. Can you see anything? Absolutely not. Okay. And this is our way with the Holy Quran. But stop it was a lot.